The internet is absolutely obsessed with old money, classic, quiet luxury styles recently. Dress timeless, look classy, look chic, look elegant, look expensive. A lot of these are used interchangeably and they often have a very plain, very minimal outfit to represent these words. I no longer believe that this represents truly classic dressing, nor a really good personal style. There is a huge myth that in order to look expensive, in order to look timeless, in order to look put together, you have to dress in very plain, minimal clothes. This trend started in the 2010s. Very Kim K aesthetic of dressing in neutral clothes has kind of taken over the world and now it's expanding into the kind of Sophia Richie style. And listen, I have no gripes with these styles. Mushroom is actually one of my personal style roots. So minimal, simple, dressing is something that I use to motivate my wardrobe but that doesn't mean it's the only way to look classic. My name is Ellie Jean, I'm a style analyst and on this channel we find our style by finding ourselves. I think the problem with this particular narrative of classic dressing is the idea that this is the only way you can look put together and I think it's leading to these bursts of attempts to escape and you get this with things like dopamine dressing which we saw a lot of during the COVID-19 pandemic. A lot of people buying very quick, very fast, colourful, poppy trends as a way to have fun but finding that that doesn't last and I think that's therefore become associated with very quick dressing. We saw it again with the Y2K resurgence. This kind of goes the other way. It's very extreme. It's like the strict parent that leads to rebellious kids. And I do think there is something in between. I think some really good examples of timeless dressing, which are not just simple and plain and neutral, include lots of European styles like Spanish and Italian styles, especially, which very typically incorporate lots of color, lots of bold patterns, and they feel very timeless. They don't feel trendy. They feel expensive. They feel chic, but they're certainly not plain. They're certainly not minimal and they're certainly not neutral. I think Reese Witherspoon is someone else who also feels very classic, very timeless, and yet her outfits are full of color and they're full of personality and they're full of femininity, which again has almost been taken as anything pink, anything girly is inherently childlike and therefore not classic and not timeless. And that's not true. The tricky to avoiding trends and being truly timeless is discovering elements of yourself that you can echo in your clothing. You won't look back. I mean, you always to an extent will look back and think, why did I wear that? But it will happen less once you find your authentic self. You'll see a reflection of you and who you are underneath, even if you discover new things that you like and enjoy. Your style progression should not look like wearing the trends of every year. That's for sure. But that doesn't mean that you just wear simple, neutral, minimal styles and say goodbye to having any fun with fashion. So the first thing I would do to incorporate more personality in your outfits to become truly timeless is to find your style roots. This is my system. You can watch this playlist here to discover all about my style route. The idea is there are eight different influences in nature and in fashion that you can pull from to tell a story with your style and to say something about who you are underneath. I'll run through them and put the descriptions on the screen. So mountain, mushroom, sun, moon, flower, fire, earth, and stone. You choose three of these which represent your true personality and the things that you find most aesthetically drawn to over time, the things that don't change, and you use these to guide the things that you buy. My second piece of advice is to pull from your background. So for example, you can pull from your country, your area, your childhood. What motif, schemes, imagery, fabrics or items can you pull from to create a more unique style? Now you have to be very careful about this. And I think Jeanne Damas is a really great example of someone who did this to her benefit. She pulled from the French women in her life that she grew up around, that she was inspired by to create her style first and then of course her brand. Some people reply to this with, oh, well, everyone wears jogging bottoms and I hate that. Well, don't pull from that. That would be a terrible idea. It doesn't bring you joy. It doesn't make you excited. For example, me, I grew up in the countryside and it's something that I feel very connected to personally. I feel connected to the fields, to the woods. And so I might pull from typical British country styles like tweed jackets and certain hats or walking boots or like welly boots. And I might read certain elements of this into my style. It can be as costumey as you like. Um, I tend to prefer it in really subtle ways, but you've got to do things that excite you. So, you know, it doesn't have to be where you're from. It could be a childhood memory. For example, you remember going to Spain and you really loved certain colors and textures that you saw there. Try and look for those and pull them into your style. Thirdly, I would think about your dream life and your dream self and what she's out there doing. If you were being your best version of yourself and she was doing the things that you've always dreamed of, what would she be wearing? What does her life look like? What kinds of motifs and patterns and styles does she wear? And how can you bring that into your life? Lots of people say things like, oh, well, my dream would be to live in New York and be in this really fancy office, but I can't walk around wearing suits all the day because I live in the muddy countryside. Well, you'd pull one or two elements. So it could be the color palette. It could be wearing a blazer with more casual trousers. It could be wearing nicer jewelry with your 
little more casual outfit. It's using it as an inspiration rather than wearing the costume. And then you just bring a little bit of that dream self into your personal life and into the life you're living now. And it also works as a manifestation technique. Next, I would suggest finding style inspirations. And I would say between three and five. Is there something you watched or read that you loved because of the aesthetic of it? For example, I loved The Secret History by Donna Tartt, partially because of the very dark academia, beautiful feel. Similarly, I loved Captain Corelli's Mandolin because of the beautiful Greek islands. What visions are you having in your mind? Or it could be like a movie that you watch, like Gilmore Girls, which is a TV show. Um, what are they wearing? What are the characters wearing? What is the feel of the show? And then try and think what that could look like in terms of fashion and how you might do a little nod to that. For example, think about how the coquette girls on TikTok pull from Lolita. Now, do I recommend copying the TikTok girl's style? No, but you could even be inspired by that and pull one or two things that you feel particularly connected to. Because, you know, obviously copying these girls isn't that original if you have no inward connection to that personal style. But if, for example, your walls were covered in posters of Taylor Swift, perhaps she could be an inspiration for you. What is it about the things she wears that appeals to you, about her aesthetic, about her brand that you love? And this can help you pull color palettes, silhouette. Try not to choose the same icons as you've seen other people online choose. For example, there was a big thing about Jane Birkin recently. Just because someone else reveres Jane Birkin and you quite like her style, doesn't mean she's someone that you should necessarily pull from. She might not necessarily be the right inspiration for you. Rather than trying to find new ones, which I think will lead you to copying other people's ideas of who your style inspiration should be, I think about the inspirations that you already have in your life, the things you've already been inspired by, the things you already love, and then try and pull from them. I also recommend for style inspirations, potentially as another route, looking at people with similar style roots as you or people with a similar body type to see how they interpret style themselves. I would make mood boards using Pinterest and Note. Pinterest is a really great point to source from. It's a really good place to collect inspiration, but then you need to do something with it. I think where a lot of people fall down and struggle with Pinterest is they'll create the boards and it's like, right, well, what now then? What you need to do then is to go through and find the patterns. And I do this using Note, so I might collect lots of images, put them in one space. So for example, I might go through and go, okay, I've seen five pictures of bows and then I'll group those together. I've seen five pictures of cream and put them together and separate them out and then think, okay, which of these things does actually feel right? Which of these feels like a motif that actually would make sense for me in my life and I am excited by and which of these just happen to go with the general vibe of the pictures that I've selected because there might be things that are like, perhaps you really like that image and that girl's wearing a mini skirt. Doesn't mean that the mini skirt is necessarily right for you. And lastly, I would record your outfits on an app like Open Wardrobe. This helps you to see which pieces in your wardrobe you're drawn to and tend to come back to and help you see patterns in your own decision making. And I would just like to clarify that I don't think that minimal, neutral, simple styles are inherently bad. Like I say, I love them. And I also think you can have a lot of fun with them. They can play a role in your wardrobe and it might even perfectly represent you and who you are. That's amazing. That's fantastic. Fantastic. However, I think there's this huge narrative that this is the only way to look current. This is the only way to look modern. This is the only way to look timeless and that it's the only way you can have good style and anything else is not good style, it's cheap style and that is simply not true. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, I really think you will enjoy my video on how I'm wearing 20% more of my wardrobe in 2023, which is this year. It's the end of this year, it's nearly 2024. If you want me to help you find your style and work out your personal style, make sure to head to bodyandstyle.com and check out my style analysis. Thanks so much for watching. I will see you next time.